A new bug that was discovered in the Horde webmail software can allow hackers to take over email servers that are running it just by the hacker sending an email to it and then somebody opening up. Doesn't require clicking any links and doesn't require clicking on any attachments. And I know we were all just laughing at Microsoft for their remote code execution bug and their proprietary software, but I hate to say it, but this Horde email software is actually open source. But don't go jumping back into the prison of proprietary programs just yet. I'll explain the deeper issue with this software and how it could be fixed in just a moment. So the purpose of this webmail application is to let the members of an organization access their email through a browser instead of having to use Outlook or some other email app like that, which can be pretty convenient because then you can access your email on any device that has a browser. Now, this webmail server sort of acts like a proxy to the organization's email server. And if it were to be compromised, the attacker would be able to steal the credentials of all of the users that are logged into the email server, and then they would more than likely be able to log in as them and impersonate them to gain even more access into the organization. And of course, the hackers can read everyone's emails that are on that web server, and they can take over any other accounts that are created with those emails, because typically with most services, that have an option to reset your password, when they do that, they're sending you a special link to your email. You click on that and then it lets you enter a new password for the account. Normally, this is a pretty secure way to reset passwords, but if your email is compromised, then it's kind of a wrap. Now, let's take a look at how this exploit works. This write-up comes from sonarsource.com, by the way. That's the group that first discovered the exploit. And ultimately, it boils down to a cross-site request forgery that can be triggered by the hacker sending an email with an external image that triggers the vulnerability when it's rendered. So, like I said, it doesn't require the end user to click on a link or to open up an attachment like we usually see from hacks that are done via email. They just have to open up that email and view it. Looking at the source code of this app, which is something that we can actually do since it's open source, uh, we can see some issues starting on line 57 of the driver.php file. And this code snippet is coming from a larger create method. Now there's some type checking that is being done on the name parameter here. If name is an array data type, then it's going to be used as a configuration by setting it equal to this SRC config on line 61. But if it's a string, like it's supposed to be, because my understanding of this name variable is that it's derived from the source variable, which as I understand it, is supposed to be the name of something like an address book that you would be looking up on this web server. Uh, but this is expecting the user to send a string and not be malicious. But when you're writing software like this that end users are going to be interacting with, you have to expect that the people are going to be malicious, or at the very least, if there's something that could go wrong, it is going to go wrong. You should keep Murphy's Law in mind when doing software development. And so a hacker that is exploiting this is able to send an array uh, for their own configuration, which ultimately is going to instantiate their own driver, as you can see here on line 112 of driver.php. Now, the steps to get RCE are to instantiate the driver with the IMSP protocol, and this will cause Horde to fetch various entries, some of which are going to be interpreted as PHP serialized objects, and then they're going to become unserialized. So then from here, you can use a tool like PHP GGC to generate a PHP object injection gadget that is then going to force Horde to deserialize a malicious object, and then that's going to give you the code execution. Now, the big issue with Horde is, of course, not that it's open source. That's actually a good thing. The problem is the fact that this software is pretty much abandonware. Okay, if we take a look 
at the GitHub here. The last commit was made at the beginning of 2019, which is forever ago in terms of software development. And if we actually take a look at the commit history, uh, we can see there's one done in 2019. There's only three that were done in 2018. There really has not been a lot of serious work that's been done on this program since 2017. So this program is pretty much five years out of date. And again, because of the types of things that this would give an attacker access to, all of the emails that an organization might have, it can give them access to the email accounts, it can give them access to other credentials by generating those password reset links and then then them clicking on them and then creating whatever kind of password, changing the password, and then obviously going from there, getting access to anything else that they might get through those compromised accounts. This is really, really critical software, all right? You don't wanna be using something like this if it's five years out of date. So my recommendation would seriously be to just stop using Horde Webmail. Uh, if we look at the timeline about Sonar's disclosure to Horde, they told them first back on February of 2022, and they give them 90 days to patch this problem before they disclose it to the public. They asked for a status update two weeks later, and then Horde ended up fixing some different kind of issue that was reported to them even earlier. And then finally on May the 3rd, they told the vendor that the 90 days has passed. And they actually, uh, Sonar actually didn't even published this until May 31st. So they really gave them more like 118 days to fix it since it was reported. And it's not just white hats that read these kinds of reports from teams like Sonar, black hats do too. And you can be sure that they are out there right now looking for webmail servers that are running this software and they are crafting exploits to trigger the CSRF to get remote code execution. But the cool thing about open source software is that someone could resurrect it if they really wanted to. Since the source code is available, you'd probably want to read uh, Sonar Sources right up yourself, which is going to be linked in the description of this video since I'm not a developer. So my explanation of the exploit, it might not be entirely accurate. Uh, obviously you're going to want to look at the full files yourself since these are just code snippets from the driver.php and merge.php and so on. But yeah, if you're a PHP developer, then maybe you could bring back this app from the dead. But until that happens, until some benevolent developer creates a pull request to fix all of these security issues, you as a user of this software or somebody that might be responsible for the cybersecurity of a company that happens to be using the software, you should immediately switch to something else. Even if it means using something proprietary, personally, when I've done email for different companies, Gmail is what I was most experienced with setting up for them, but there are other open source webmail applications. There is MailPile, for example. This seems to be one of the more highly rated uh, open source email clients. I personally don't think I've used it. I don't think I've even used it as an end user before, but you can tell that there's quite a bit more activity that is on it, and it's obviously much more up to date than that Horde webmail that we were looking at. And there's also Squirrel Mail. This is one that I have used as an end user. And again, it's a really popular open source email. So start looking into some better alternatives if you were using this vulnerable email service. Like and comment, attack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey and have a great day.